Hey guys, welcome back to Matt Keeps Fish. We're back. We're trying it again. We're restarting. Kind of. Not really. I don't know. We're doing some things. We're tweaking it a little bit. There's a lot of new stuff to talk to you guys about. There's stuff that I've been working on rather than filming so that I can get all the filming done after things have kind of started without that pressure. That said, this video is breaking the silence, so I'm going to show you guys what's going on now. First up, apartment. Big apartment, I kind of showed you guys in a short, so I guess I wasn't silent that whole time. 20 gallon aquarium right here, five gallons being set up, probably like 20 liter vase over there. 20 liters sounds like a lot. Alexa, how many gallons is 20 liters? 20 liters is about 5.28 gallons. Oh. That's way more than what that vase is. So, hopefully the quality is good. It's a new iPhone, not on purpose. There was a bit of an accident, which we'll talk about later. There's our sign. Got lots of plants everywhere, beautiful kitchen. And here's the first little aquatic world. It's got a pineapple at Hope's request. Lots and lots of pearl weed just growing all on its own there. A little bit of light, a couple snails. We've got grandfather clock here. There's a wooden frog that I got from St. Lucia. There's some of our Lego. I love this couch. It's a really awesome couch. It's super comfortable. We've got more of the Star Wars collection that few of you know me for. Lego car up there from the wedding. One of the awesome gifts. And then we've got the 20 gallon rimless aquarium, which is looking just awesome. We've got three ember tetras in there, an assassin snail, an army of cherry shrimp. Um, Plants are growing okay, but there's definitely more plans for the future. And then we got the five gallon, which I'm probably gonna set up today, time willing. You guys probably saw there, I also have this awesome lightsaber, which maybe I'll do something in the outro with. And it is just the coolest wedding gift ever. It's so, so cool. So I'm definitely gonna film something at the end. Anyways, so you guys know that I had a wedding and when you have a wedding, usually people go on a honeymoon, they go somewhere on vacation. So we went to St. Lucia in the Caribbean and the whole time as we were planning for it, I'm like, we got to get snorkels. So we got snorkels and I put my iPhone in a, in a plastic bag and I went underwater and started filming stuff with it. And I got three good runs out of it. On the third run, I got a little too deep with the iPhone and I don't know if salt water got in the bag or what happened, but the phone just died. Just. I brought it back to the hotel and it was done. Like, here's a picture of what it looks like. It looked like a black hole was eating the phone. It was terrifying. And so we just got my phone here back in time to be able to transfer everything over. Like I still had like my proposal videos and stuff on that, like that on there. And i um, really glad that I didn't lose it, but I'm definitely not filming underwater with my phone ever again. All right, so here I am on the west side of St. Lucia. Starting right off here, look at these tangs and all the gobies in there, all the cleaner gobies. The most plentiful fish around there were the cleaner gobies because they were willing to eat anything in those. They look like Saswasser tang piles, which is really cool. You can see here, you come out of the Saswasser tang and you enter right into these sandy beaches. And then from the sand, you get up to these big rock walls, which were keeping the big waves out so the water could stay really calm for these fish. And you can just see all these Sergeant Majors in here. Really beautiful with those yellow backs. I believe they're a species of damselfish. I'm not great with fish, but we've got a, a bluehead wrasse there, I think. Uh, I think these are yellow snappers. I did a bit of research before I made this video, before I recorded this, but this was the cleanest video I had at this point, but it got a lot better later on. It's hard filming through a plastic bag. I think that's another black damselfish there. Oh, those guys were amazing, the red ones. I'll put the name right where he showed up because he's a beautiful fish. 
forget what this one is. You saltwater people are like, dude, just name the fish correctly. More tangs, guys. Ah, oh, these tangs look so nice. Not sure at all what these plants were, but it's cool to see saltwater plants out in the wild because you don't see that in an aquarium. Nobody puts plants in their saltwater aquariums. I forget what these guys were. They had a very interesting name. I'll put it down here again. Really big eyes on them. And then if you look up, there's a sea urchin wearing some Siswasser tang. I'm just going to keep calling it Siswasser tang. You can see over here again where the rock meets the sand. There's a goatfish down there. Hope thought it was a catfish. Easy mistake though, because it's got these massive whiskers coming out the side of its face. So cool. Some more snappers down here, I think. The smaller ones weaving in closer to the rock. I forget what those things were there. Really cool. And then this is when we're out in the in the open ocean. This was right beside the Pitons, the mountains in St. Lucia. Right by the coast. That was a blue tang there. Absolutely beautiful. Down here we've got a blue parrot. This was the most beautiful fish I saw there. Absolutely gorgeous. Probably the shot that ended up breaking my phone. These are a little out of order here. Then we have a coral reef over here. Absolutely beautiful, guys. I could not believe that I had seen this in real life, right in front of my face. So cool. I almost drowned just staying out there for an hour, getting all these shots with, uh, with my snorkel on. So cool. I drank so much salt water while I was out here. This is the cleanest shot we got. Absolutely beautiful. I don't know why it was so clean, but you can see the tang and the goatfish, and there was another fish that just went in behind the rock. Or not goatfish, sorry, parrotfish. The gray one there in the rock. Beautiful. This looks like lichen, a lichen, but I don't know what it actually is. Uh, these, these fan anemones, I have no idea. Damselfish, I think. Great shot of the reef on the left side of the rock there. No idea what that is. Uh, reef people, help me out. <laughs> Just beautiful varieties of coral. Right by the uh, resort in the first few videos, all the coral was kind of gray, kind of dead looking. But over here, you've got the reds and the greens and everything. Another parrotfish there, mm -hmm. female. And uh, you don't even need black lights for these corals. I always thought that you need a black or blue light if you want your coral to look good. But And then if you look out there, more Sergeant Majors chasing Hope and I. All the way out there. So much beautiful blue ocean. Another blue head wrasse there. Adorable. Checking to see if we were bringing them snacks. And then you can see everywhere, everywhere, everywhere was just covered in fish. So many different fishes. That's a tube sponge, I believe. Big open ocean. And then this is kind of where my phone dies. <laughs> Spiral into death. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now let's talk about plans for the 20 gallon. Currently cherry shrimp and ember tetras. Probably going to... I have no idea what I'm going to do with the assassin snail in there. I might just let him be. I'm going to have a larger school of ember tetras. I'm going to have a honey garami as a centerpiece. And I'm going to have an Asian stone catfish, otherwise known as anchor catfish. Now, typically they're supposed to be kept in cooler water, but I've been doing a lot of research on their temperature needs. And they seem to live just as long in cool water as they do in a tropical temperature. You can really see here that I've picked fish carefully that don't swim very fast. That's because I had a bad incident with a guppy who jumped out the back. Now you guys can see, this is a custom lid. I had to build this. If you want to see how to do that, it's on my shorts tab. But I basically cut pieces of plastic and attached them to the glass lid so that there was no possible way for them to get out, for any of the fish to jump out. And the guppy jumped through just like the smallest of gaps. And I'm just like, dang it. If it was hatchet fish, I would have covered the whole thing in duct tape, but it's a guppy, you know? I didn't think it'd be that jumpy. Nevertheless, I've learned my lesson. No more super streamlined, jumpy fish, even guppies. I am still trying to figure out what kind of plants I want in there. On the side with the filter, I think I want jungle val because the runners are gonna spread it out about inch, two inches, so that the leaves will come up and kind of cover the filter. And then on the other side, on the heater side, I think I want a big water sprite to kind of act as a, a floating plant. 
and then have swords coming down this hill towards the sand. Either that or crypts, I'm not quite sure yet. There's a lot of different species of each, and they'll all grow to different sizes depending on the nutrients that are available in your aquarium. Anyways, those are my thoughts on the 20 gallon. Let me know what you guys think. I'm gonna go play with my lightsaber now. That's pretty cool. Hopefully the sound's coming out okay for you guys. There you go.